Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have square root of x minus 1 over x plus the square root of 1 minus 1 over x equals x. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the second one. So for my second method, I'm going to square both sides. When I square both sides, I have a plus b inside the parentheses. So when we square, we get a squared plus b squared plus 2ab, which is going to be the product of these two expressions. And that whole thing is equal to x squared. Let's go ahead and simplify this. We have x minus 1 over x minus 1 over x. That's x minus 2 over x. And then we have a plus 1. And then 2 times the quantity. Let's go ahead and multiply these. Distribute. x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. And that's equal to x squared. Now let's go ahead and isolate the radical. 2 times x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared inside the radical equals x squared and then subtract x add 2 over x and minus 1 and then we're going to square both sides one more time and when we square we're going to get a lot of expressions we're going to get rid of all the radicals but good luck with sol solving this equation right obviously that's going to be very very painful now there should be a better way, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the first method. So the first, for the first method, let's go ahead and write the original equation first. Now, I have a radical expression, and I want to go ahead and write its conjugate. So let's go ahead and write the same thing with a minus sign in between. So x minus 1 over x, the square root of that, minus the square root of 1 minus 1 over x. We don't know what it is in terms of x. Let's go ahead and call that a. Okay. So since these are two conjugates, we can go ahead and multiply them. And by multiplying, we're getting rid of the radicals because it's kind of like this. You're multiplying square root of a plus square root of b by square root of a minus square root of b, which is from difference of two squares a minus b because you're squaring the square roots they cancel out leaving us with a minus b make sense so that's how the formula works so this is gonna be the following the first expression inside the radical minus the second expression inside the radical and that's equal to ax okay let's go ahead and expand 1 over x cancels out so we end up with x minus 1 equals ax. Now our goal is to solve for a here so that we can set up another system. So let's go ahead and solve for a. a is x minus 1 over x. We divided both sides by x, okay? Great. Now let's go ahead and plug in that for a. So that gives us the following. Let's rewrite the first equation square root of x minus 1 over x. By the way, this is the original problem. Right? With a plus sign, this equals x. And its conjugate, we just found out, is equal to x minus 1 all over x. Awesome. Now, we got a good system. And we can go ahead and add these up. And when we add these up, the second radical is going to cancel out. We're going to have two times the square root of x minus 1 over x. Right? And then that equals, that equals x plus x minus 1 over x. Now, this might still look a little confusing. And if you make a common denominator, you're going to get something like x squared plus x minus 1 over x. It's not going to help a lot. Unless you turn it into something like this. Notice that here we can separate x over x and 1 over x, right? So that becomes the following. x plus 1 minus 1 over x. 
And then obviously this can be written as x minus 1 over x plus 1. And we have the square root of x minus 1 over x. Does that make sense? Since we have the same thing more than once, let's go ahead and use substitution. Let's go ahead and call this t. And this is going to give us, you can call it coffee if you want. 2 times the square root of t is t because this is also t plus 1. Now, you might be wondering, like, how do I solve this equation? It's, it's radical, right? So a lot of times with radical equations, we square both sides, right? And then from here, we get 4t equals t squared plus 2t plus 1. And then subtract 2t, we get t squared minus 2t, or not 2t, equals 1. If you're a tutor, equals 0. But guess what? This is t minus 1 squared equals 0. Sorry. I'm writing it backwards, but hopefully you get the idea, and t equals 1. Make sense? So since that's the only value, I'm hoping that it's going to satisfy the radical. Otherwise, we end up with no solutions. Let's go ahead and check with the original one. 2 root t equals t plus 1. If t is 1, we get 2 equals 2, which is good. Awesome. So t equals 1 is valid, and that's the only solution. But what is t? t is x minus 1 over x. By the way, there's actually another way to approach this problem. Let me show you real quick because it's kind of cool. You didn't even have to square both sides. And I know some of you thought about this. Let's put everything on the same side. And let's put this in the middle so you can see better, hopefully. This is a perfect square. You know what? That's the square root of t minus 1 quantity squared equals 0, which means square root of t equals 1, which means t equals 1. Make sense? Awesome. So we can find the answer in different ways. Obviously, this seems a little easier. You don't want to square both sides on, uh, as long as you can avoid it because uh, you have to check for extraneous solutions. So t equals 1 to keep a long story short. And that brings us to this point. x minus 1 over x is going to be 1, right? And let's see what we get from here. Let's go ahead and multiply everything by x. x squared minus 1 equals x. And then x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And then from here, x becomes negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That becomes a root 5 over 2. Does that look familiar to you? x equals 1 plus root 5 over 2. And x equals 1 minus root 5 over 2. And if you said golden ratio, you're absolutely right about that. But here's the question, the million dollar question. Are both solutions going to satisfy this equation, you can actually go ahead and check out. So for our domain, actually, we do need x minus 1 over x to be greater or equal to 0 and 1 minus 1 over x greater or equal to 0. So you can go ahead and check these roots against those or solve the inequality and then see what the solutions are going to be like. But that part is left as an exercise for you. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.